Run it back, Billy. No fraud, no fanboys, no intro. Do you have a general opinion on Ben Simmons time in Philadelphia and kind of where he is now and maybe where or how it, it, it went wrong? I know you called three or four seasons of, of Ben. Um, you are the voice behind the iconic first three point attempt. <laughs> um, and I was just actually telling my girlfriend about it a couple of minutes ago because we were celebrating a player shooting a three pointer, which sounds silly in hindsight, but they, if the people didn't understand the context of the situation. Uh, do you just have a general opinion on, on the Ben Simmons, uh, era in Philly and, uh, what happened maybe? Well, it's, it's not that easy to answer in, you know, a brief sentence or two, what I see is some responsibility on Ben's part, but also an issue that may not be his fault and probably would have required a little more compassion than was shown to him. So let's take the second part first. The compassion for him would be the issue of mental health. And the fact that if a player gets hurt, I'm talking about physically, knee, ankle, whatever it happens to be, and cannot play, we understand that, we appreciate that, and we'll give that player a pass. But when it comes to mental health, because it's hidden, and it's a mind issue or a brain issue, if you will, we are less understanding about that. And Ben Simmons clearly has and continues to have, I would think, some mental health challenges. All of that said, he does have to bear some responsibility for holes in his game. And while the broadcaster for the team, I was one of those who embraced what he could do and didn't necessarily criticize what he couldn't do. But the fact that he didn't do certain things, meaning shoot or shoot the three, uh, was clearly something that he had to bear at least some responsibility for. Uh, not shooting free throws very, very well, not going to the line as often as a point guard should. Uh, that had to have been uh, a better part of his game. Now, all that have, could have been related to his mental health issues. And so, you know, it's hard to define what it was that could be attributed to mental health issues and what could be attributed to maybe Ben should have worked harder on those aspects of his game. So that's the long answer to your short question. I will say that at 6'10", and for doing what he did, he was a freak. He was a guy who, and I say that uh, as a compliment, the fact that he could play point guard, he was a willing passer, he could defend anybody on the floor. I mean, those are some very valuable assets. And keep in mind, he was an all-star, not necessarily from fan voting, but because the Eastern Conference coaches voted him as a reserve which means that they understood and respected his game, even though he didn't shoot from the outside or take threes or was necessarily that good from the line. And so it's not a simple uh, answer, but um, I do wish him um, uh, well in terms of his mental health issues. And while he does play for the Nets or probably will never play for the Sixers again, I hope he has uh, a good rest of his career in the NBA. Yeah, I, I always kind of said, no matter how frustrated I got uh, throughout the years of, of wishing he would do certain things, um, I always I always say, even recently, I, I said, uh, as a basketball fan, I would like for him to just kind of come out of it and, and you know, do what, what we kind of thought his his potential was, uh, you know, when he came out of college, just as, just as a, you know, I don't want to, I never, like, rooted for anyone to fail. It was just frustrating, you know, as a Sixers fan uh, when he was here. But, yeah, if if he can overcome the things that he's dealing with, he's still, he's still what, 26, 27? Thereabouts, um, thereabouts. Yeah. yeah, he's got yeah. the better part of his career left to go. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, how do, What do you think 
when you retired from broadcasting, was there, was it just, was it just 26 years is enough? You know what I mean? Did, I don't know how to ask this and I don't want this to be offensive, but did, uh, did a couple of years of calling the process maybe wear on you a little bit? The three years where you kind of knew the Sixers weren't at least roster wise, trying to put a team on the floor that was trying to really win a lot of games. How frustrating was that as a broadcast broadcaster? And I think you did an amazing job, by the way, to, to call all of those games and make it sound interesting when you know everybody kind of knew what was going on. Well, first, thank you for the compliments. And I will say this, who out there hasn't thought and, you know, I, who out there hasn't thought wow, what a really cool job Zumoff had or has uh, to be the voice of a team, to get paid to go to games, to travel with the team, to stay in their hotel, to fly the charters, to be there with the players, to be the soundtrack for great moments or not so great moments. It's the gig of a lifetime. There are, only, there are fewer NBA broadcasters than there are U.S. Senators, and there's only 100 of those. And so... What you have to remember is to not forget that, that it's the gig of a lifetime, especially for a kid who grew up in Northeast Philly and saw his first Sixer game in 1963 when the team moved from Syracuse and never looked back and just always loved it and wanted to be the voice of the Sixers when he was a kid. And so given all of that, you learn to deal with the ups and downs uh, of a team from season to season and you become professional about it. And so what I did was just merely accept the challenge of doing the games of a 10-win team. And you find smaller stories to talk about, or you talk about the opponent, and you just get into the game, and you respect and remember your job, and that's it. Uh, I learned a long time ago that I have absolutely, positively zero control of what goes on on the floor. And so I just merely broadcast the games. I embrace it. I try to enjoy it. I make the best of a bad situation and hope for things to get better. And listen, they did. Um, and I had a great ride in 2001. And I had a great ride up until the time that I retired these last few years. So absolutely no frustration. And um, I just consider myself one of the luckiest guys on the face of the earth. And hey, it's a great way to look at it, man. That's a great way to look at it. And that can go a long way. People can take uh, people can take notes from a guy like you. <laughs> remain po remain positive in all aspects of life, and uh, you know, just keep working hard and keep staying positive, and you can get to wherever you want to be.